I'm Francine Jolesberg, also known as Annie Franny, the Reading Nanny. The book I'm going to read today is called Aesop, and it's called The Dolphins, the Whales, and the Cudgeon. I'm going to read various stories in here for you. The first one is called The Eagle, the Jackdaw, and the Shepherd. An eagle dropping suddenly from a high rock carried off a lamb. A jackdaw saw this was smitten by a sense of rivalry and determined to do the same. So with a great deal of noise, he pounced upon a ram, but his claws mer mer merely got caught in the thick ringlets of the ram's fleece. And no matter how frantically he flapped his wings, he was unable to get free and take flight. Finally, the shepherd bestirred himself, hurried up to the jackdaw, and got hold of him. He clipped the end of his wings, and when evening fell, he carried him back for his children. The children wanted to know what sort of bird this was. So the shepherd replied, as far as I can see, it's a jackdaw, but it would like us to think it's an eagle. And a little quote below this says, just so to compete with the powerful is not only not worth the effort and labor lost, but also brings mockery and calamity upon us. Interesting story there. Ooh, the next one is called The Cat and the Cock. A cat who had caught a cock wanted to give a plausible reason for devouring it. So she accused it of annoying people by crowing at night and disturbing their sleep. The cock defended himself by saying that he did it to be helpful. For if he woke people up, it was to summon them to their accustomed work. Then the cat produced another grievance and accused the cock of insinuating, na insult, excuse me, insulting nature by his relationship with his mother and sisters. The cock replied that in this also he was serving his master's interest, since it was thanks to this that the chickens laid lots of eggs. Ah, well, cried the cat, I'm not going to go without food just because you can produce a lot of justifications. And she ate the cock. This fable shows that someone with a wicked nature who was determined to do wrong when he cannot do so in the guise of a good man, does evil deeds openly. Another thought-provoking one. The goat and the donkey. A man kept a goat and a donkey. The goat became jealous of the donkey because it was so well fed. So she said to him, what with turning the millstone and all the burdens you carry your life is just a torment without end. She advised him to pretend to have epilepsy and to fall into a hole in order to get some rest. The donkey followed her advice, fell down and was badly bruised all over. His master went to get the vet and asked him for a remedy for these injuries. The vet pres prescribed an infusion of goat's lung, this remedy would surely restore him to health. As a result, the man sacrificed the goat to cure the donkey. Whosoever schemes against others owes his own misfortune to himself. That one I really like. Here we go. The two cocks and the eagle. Two cockerels were fighting over some hens. One triumphed and saw the other off. The defeated one then withdrew into a thicket where he hid himself. The victor fluttered by into the air and sat atop a high wall where he began to crow with a loud voice. Straight away, an eagle fell upon him and carried him off. And from then on, the cockerel, hidden in the shadows, possessed all the hens at his leisure. This fable shows that the Lord resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. 
the fisherman and the large and small fish. A fisherman drew in his net from the sea. He could catch big fish, which he spread out in the sun. But the small fish slipped through the mesh, escaping into the sea. People of a mediocre fortune escape danger easily, but one rarely sees a man of great note escape when there is a disaster. Hmm, I gotta think through that one. Not quite sure I get it. The Fox and the Woodcutter. A fox who was fleeing ahead of some hunters saw a woodcutter and pleaded with him to find a hiding place. The woodcutter promised to hide him in his hut and so did so. Some moments later, the huntsman arrived and asked the woodcutter if he had seen a fox in the vicinity. He replied in words that he had not seen one go past, but by signaling with his hands, he indicated where the fox was hidden. The huntsman, however, took no notice of his gestures and simply took him at his word. After they had gone, the fox emerged from the hut without saying anything. When the woodcutter reproached him for showing no gratitude for having saved him, the fox replied, I would thank you if your gestures and your conduct had agreed with your words. One could ap apply this fable to men who make protestations of virtue, but who actually behave like rascals. That one I understood. <laughs> Ooh, this is called the fox and the billy goat. A fox, having fallen into a well, was faced with the prospect of being stuck there. But then a billy goat came along to that same well because he was thirsty and saw the fox. He asked him if the water was good. The fox decided to put a brave face on it and gave a tremendous speech about how wonderful the water was down there. So very excellent. So the billy goat climbed down the well, thinking only of his thirst. When he had had a good drink, he asked the fox what he thought was the best way to get back up again. The fox said, well, I have a very good way to do that. Of course, it will mean our working together. If you just push your front feet up against the wall and hold your horns up in the air as high as you can, I will climb up onto them, get out, and then I can pull you up behind me. The billy goat willingly consented to this idea and the fox briskly clambered up the legs, the shoulders, and finally the horns of his companion. He found himself at the mouth of the well, pulled himself out, and immediately scampered off. The billy goat shouted after him, reproaching him for breaking their agreement of mutual assistance. The fox came back to the top of the well and shouted down to the billy goat, "Ha!" If you had as many brains as you have hairs on your chin, you wouldn't have gotten down there in the first place without thinking of how you were going to get out again. It is thus that sensible men should not undertake any action without having first examined the end result. All right, I think I can get one more in before I have to start again. Ready? The man bitten by an ant and Hermes. One day, a sailing ship sank to the bottom of the sea with all its passengers. A man who was a witness of the shipwreck claimed that the decrees of the gods were unjust. For to lose a single impious person, they had also made the innocent perish. There were a great many ants on the spot where he was standing. As he was saying this, it happened that one of them bit him. In order to kill it, he crushed them all. Then Hermes appeared to him and struck him with his wand, saying, And now do you not admit that the gods judge men in the same way you judge the ants? Don't blaspheme me against the gods when misfortune befalls you. Examine your own fault. All right, I will continue on in another video. 
I hope you enjoyed what I've read so far. Enjoy your day. Bye.